We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 9 or 11 a.m. here at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. Well, good morning. It's great to be with you guys. Are we, are we alive and awake? Yes. All right. All right. You know, um, I have to say last weekend, uh, by the way, my name's John. I'm one of the pastors here at ACC. It's awesome to be with you guys this morning. Last weekend, uh, the pastors and I, we, we, we actually embarked with a whole bunch of y'all out to Virginia for an ACC men's weekend. And let me tell you, it was amazing. It was awesome. And this morning, I want to give a shout out actually to, to Pastor Matt, to Pastor Mac and Pastor Mike, Michael. Um, you know, these guys, they poured into the men here at ACC, and the staff here is just amazing. They do an amazing job of just bringing everybody together and, and just, you know, helping men to truly man up, okay? And uh, we learned a lot, and I'm looking forward to next year. I'm looking forward to next year doing the ACC Men's Weekend again. Well, today we are going to continue on in our Rhythms series, and we're going to be talking about the Rhythm of Rest, Okay, some of you guys, I, I got to tell you, you know, sometimes Sunday morning, it's like, yeah, I need about three or four of those. I know all about needing some rest, right? <laughs> well, you know what? Today we're going to talk about some of that. We're going to talk about some of the uh, red flags of maybe you need a little bit more rest. Maybe we need more rest in our lives. We're going to also talk about what does the Bible say about this and what are some of the benefits of rest and then some of the ways that we do rest because some of this is a physical and some of it is also spiritual. But before we do that, let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. God Almighty, we thank you. We thank you for making space for grace. We thank you for giving us, us a rhythm of worship, a rhythm of rest, that these are patterns for our lives so that we can truly commune with the living God. Father, I ask that you would help me to speak your word clearly this morning and boldly. And Father, I thank you for your amazing grace that I need just as much today as the first day that I began walking with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Well, you know, when we talk about this idea of a rhythm of rest, you know, it's almost like you have to go to the other side. And I think of a story back in my early 20s, when I was a bachelor, I was still bachelor in it, okay, many, many years ago. And as a bachelor, I would burn the wick at both ends, okay? I would stay up late, I would get up early, I would do all these things, and I was working a lot. And I remember one particular night morning, I don't know, it was dark out, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell those things. And when this happened, I remember driving and being very, very tired. It was one of those, uh, one of those nights where, you know, ever had that moment where you just feel like you need some toothpicks to hold open your eyes? You know, you ever had one of those? Yeah, one of those moments where you're slapping yourself in the face, opening the, the, the window to bring in some cold air, whatever you can do, turning up the music. Well, on this particular occasion, I was having a hard time staying awake. And I don't know what my driving was like, but today, if you saw me driving, you'd probably get out your cell phone and call it in. And lo and behold, I, got, I became very awake when suddenly I started to see flashing lights and hear sirens. And I pulled off to the side of the road, and apparently I looked like a drunk driver, okay? I'd slowed down, I was kind of going a little, and it was not a good place to be. It was not a good thing. Now, on this particular occasion, it actually taught me the, the benefit of, on these particular occasions, pulling off to the side of the road and taking a nap if you need to. It's okay to do that. Okay, it's okay to do that. But when I talk about this, understand, maybe you've never, never had that, but you know, we all have moments, we all have rhythms, we all have patterns at times where, you know what, we get tired. 
We get tired. In fact, actually, when we look at the statistics, we see that this whole thing that I went through of getting pulled over, y'all could have gotten pulled over many times over the years, I'm guessing, because we see that one in 25 drivers admit to falling asleep behind the wheel. That's just the ones who admit it, okay? We also see that drowsy driving accounts for about 100,000 crashes annually on the roadway, 71,000 injuries, 1,550 fatalities each year, okay? And finally, we also find that about 24% of drivers admit to having driven while being so tired that they had a hard time keeping their eyes open at least once in the past 30 days. So I know, obviously, this is, this is other people. We don't deal with that in here, right? Well, statistically speaking, I'm guessing that some of you guys have dealt with this in the last week, the last month in this lifetime. And as we go in to the most wonderful time of the year, the Christmas season, I'm certain that you will all be rested and rejuvenated at the end of it, right? Never. Yeah, ne- never, <laughs> never. So within this, I think it's important for us to find this rhythm of rest now. Because otherwise, by the new year, you are going to be completely worn out, just like every year before, right? So here's some red flags, red flag rhythms that we find. And remember, rhythms are patterns. And when we live in that pattern, we may begin to see some things going on. And sometimes you don't see it, but everybody around you see it. Just like when I was driving, I couldn't see what my driving was like, but I guarantee you, everyone else did. So here's five rhythms, red flag rhythms, okay? The first one is, if you're more tired than restored on Monday, that's tomorrow, okay? If tomorrow morning you wake up and you're like, man, I am more tired today than I am maybe even on Friday, that's a red flag. Another one is, if you're more tired after the vacation than before. You ever heard it? I need a vacation from my vacation. Yeah, we've all been there at some point or another. Another red flag, if you can't recall the last time you unplugged, the last time you unplugged, you're like, I've been going so fast, I don't even remember the last time that I had a moment of rest. I don't remember the last time that, maybe in your marriage, you don't remember the last time that you went on a date. That's a red flag. And that leads into another red flag. If your family has gotten used to you being absent, do not allow that to happen. Don't let that happen because, listen, there are things that come after that, okay, that you don't want to deal with, okay? So don't let them get used to you being absent. That doesn't mean that your kids aren't like, you want to go on a date? Yes! And they're really excited for you to go on a date because they want a rest from you. Go, go. And the last red flag to really avoid, it's a rhythm that you don't want, is if you can't recall the last time that you had a fresh word from God. We need fresh words. That means, you know, we are actually communing with the living God. We are actually talking with Him. We're actually getting into His Word. This is important because ultimately a rhythm of rest allows us to orient our hearts towards God and the most important things in life. And things being people more than anything. Because understand, if you can recognize your pattern, you can change your rhythm. But first you have to be able to recognize that rhythm. You have to recognize the pattern of what's going on in your life before you can change the pattern. But if you can recognize it, you can change it. And as we talk about this, I think about a particular story in the Bible. I think about a story of the prophet Elijah. We find this story in 1 Kings chapter 18. In 1 Kings chapter 18, we find that Elijah, Elijah, uh, things are going bad in Israel. In fact, he says this, he says, Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Now, that's not actually true. That's how he felt. He thought that he was the only prophet, but God had actually reserved other prophets that he didn't know were still around. But he felt alone. And in the midst of this, 
This is the moment where basically uh, Elijah steps out and he says to the prophets of Baal, listen, let's find out who the real God is because y'all are following a false God is, is basically what he's saying. We're going we're gonna to go to the true God, Yahweh. And here's how we're going to determine this, just in case you haven't heard the story. Elijah says, we're going to take all this wood and we're going to call out to our gods. You call out to your false god, I'll call out to the true God. And whichever one responds with fire, that's the true God. Now, mind you, this is in the middle of a drought that's gone on for several years. And ultimately, you know, the prophets of Baal, they call out, they call out to Baal. And Elijah's over here, he starts to taunt them. And as he taunts them, eventually nothing happens because Baal isn't real. Then Elijah basically says, stand over here, stand back, it's going to get really hot around here. And as he does, he says, hey, listen, this has been a drought, I don't want there to be any question, put some water on there, put some more, put some more. And then he calls out to Yahweh, the living God, and God brings down fire from heaven, it incinerates all the wood, all the water, everything is gone. After this, the prophets of Baal, they end up being dead, okay? But in the midst of this, afterwards, then Elijah, he gets down on his knees and he begins to cry out to God and pray for rain. You ever done that? He prays for rain. And maybe you've not prayed for a, a, a literal rain, but you've prayed for God to do something in your life. And he cries out to God to do what only God can do. He cries out and he prays five times. And finally, there's a little cloud that they can barely see. And it brings, it brings a whole lot of rain. Now, on the, at the heels, at the end of this, ultimately what ends up happening is King Ahab, who's the king of Israel at this time, he tells his wife Jezebel about this. And Jezebel says, Elijah will be dead by tomorrow. I'm done with this. And then we read in 1 Kings 19, 3 through 4, it says, Elijah was afraid. Of what? Of Jezebel, because she wants his life. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said Take my life, I am no better than my ancestors. Have you ever had one of those moments where you just say, enough's enough, Lord? Like you're not, it, it may not be one of those things of I'm suicidal. And if that is you, then, then it's important to share that with somebody, okay, to get some help with that. But it's one of those moments, we've all had that moment, I think, haven't we? We've all had that moment where, you know, we had just simply had enough. It's interesting, last month, October, is known as Pastor Appreciation Month. And over the years, there's been times where I've heard from people like, why do we need to have a Pastor Appreciation Month? Because I think that there needs to be a reminder that, listen, as hard as life is in general, we appreciate our pastors. But statistically speaking, depending on who you talk to, 70 to 80% of all pastors, of all ministers of the gospel, okay, Within America, 70 to 80 percent leave the ministry within the first five years of ministry, and they never return vocationally. It's important to have grace and mercy towards people. And, and granted, this is an amazing church. This is an amazing church. But even we can be susceptible to those things. But understand, in your lives, when we talk about a rhythm of rest, it's important to understand that sometimes you're going to have moments where you're like, you know what, I feel like that. Enough is enough, just like Elijah. And it goes on here. Elijah, I think it's important to see what happens next because it says, Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep at once. An angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. See, here he is. He's by himself. He's in the middle of nowhere, in the wilderness. He's hungry. He's tired, all this stuff. He sleeps, he eats. Right after it, he sleeps again. And he gets up and he eats again. And then eventually, he goes on a journey and eventually he actually uh, 
comes into communi- communion with God. He hears God in the silence. Isn't that a beautiful thing? God is in the silence of our lives. Sometimes silence can be deadening, but if we listen closely, God is there in the silence and He's trying to get our attention. There's an acronym when, when you go to recovery programs, whether NAAA or Celebrate Recovery, my favorite, there's an acronym known as HALT. It, it symbolizes, it stands for hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. These are all, this is an acronym that basically says, listen, we're all susceptible to hurts, habits, and hang-ups. But if you have any of these four things going on, you're even more susceptible. For those who are in their 20s thereabouts, there's a way that we used to say this halt thing when I was younger. Nothing good happens after 11 o'clock. Ooh, man, that hits some people. Nothing good happens after 11 o'clock. And notice, I didn't say that to the 40-year-olds because I know that 40 and above, y'all are going to bed a whole lot earlier than 11 o'clock, aren't you? You're like, man, I used to be able to do that. I can't do that anymore. It's okay. We're all, we're, we're, we're all in it together. But understand that we can be susceptible to unhealthy patterns in life when we don't pay attention to these things. Our hurts, habits, and hang-ups, which we all have, can become even more susceptible when we don't stop and halt. Because at the end of the day, sometimes, and I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but sometimes the most spiritual thing we can do is rest. Or I like how uh, Pastor John Ortberg, who wrote the book, um, uh, uh, The Life You've Always Wanted, I love how he puts it. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap. Now, I want to also warn you, if that's the only thing that you get from me this morning, please add something more to it. But dudes, you can use this Sunday afternoon, okay? And I know that for some of you guys, you take that experience to a whole nother level because, you know, dads, we, we've all been there, we've all seen y'all where, you know, you're watching TV, you fall asleep, and somebody in the family goes to change. And what do you say? I was watching that. No, you weren't. You were finally resting. You were, in, you were in the place that you needed to be because this is a good pattern. We need to rest. Sometimes we really do need that nap. In fact, here's the thing. We have each and every single one of us, whether, whether you have chosen to follow Jesus or not, I want you to hear very clearly that God created you with a purpose and a plan and a pattern for life that includes rest. In fact, we see it at the very beginning. God has created the heavens and the earth, chapter 1 of Genesis. He's created, He's taken six days, and He's made everything in the universe. And at the end of that, we read in Genesis 2-2, by the seventh day, God had finished the work He had been doing, so on the seventh day, He rested from all His work. He sets out the pattern himself. Just like Jesus, when Jesus got baptized, he says that we do this in order to fulfill all righteousness. Does that mean that Jesus needed to be baptized because he had sinned? No. He's given us a pattern to live out that when we believe in him, when we repent of our sin, then we get baptized. He's giving us that space for grace. But in addition to this, we see in Genesis 2, 3, What God does next is amazing. It says, Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. That means He set it aside for a specific purpose. For a specific purpose. For a specific pattern. A rhythm for life, it says. Because on it, He rested from all the work of creating that He had done. So hear this clearly. If the omnipotent God of the universe... If the omnipotent God of the universe can rest for a day after creating the universe, it's okay for you to rest too. In fact, He's encouraging it. He's actually encouraging us to have this rest. Now, in this rest, understand that there's a lot of rest that needs to happen in our lives. One of the rhythms of rest is rest from our responsibility. You ever feel like it's all up to you? It's all up to you. It's all on your shoulders. 
Well, one of the rhythms of rest we see in Psalm 127, 1 and 2. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, that's responsibility, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain, you rise early and stay up late, burning the candle at both ends, toiling for food to eat, for He grants sleep to those He loves. Let me ask you this morning. Who's building your house? Who's building your life? Who's, who's guarding that house once it's been built? Your house, your family, your relationships, your marriage, all those things. Who is guarding it? Who's protecting all of it? Is it you or is it God? You see, we need that space for grace. And when we ultimately take that pattern that rhythm of rest. We're saying, God, I'm entrusting this to you. I'm entrusting this to you. Another rhythm of rest that we see is rest from our frets. There's a point in Matthew chapter 6. This is known as the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus, you know, He is on the mount. He's there. He is telling everyone this ama- these amazing stories. And one of those things that he says is, listen, oftentimes in life, you know, we, we worry about certain things. We worry about what am I going to eat or what's my family going to eat? And if you're not worried about it and you have kids, I guarantee you, I don't know about you, my kids at times, first thing in the morning, they haven't even had breakfast and they will say, what are we having for lunch? After lunch, they say, what are we having for dinner? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. The other thing that will happen is we worry about, well, what am I going to wear? Now, maybe it's not one of those things of what am I going to wear when I go to or something like that. But really, it's we worry about things that we don't need to worry about. Jesus says, listen, look at, look at the birds of the air. God takes care of them. Look at the flowers of the field. God takes care of them. And then he goes on and he says in Matthew 6, 34, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. If you need somebody to worry about tomorrow, let tomorrow worry about it is what he says. You you need to just simply be focused on today. Don't worry about the past. Don't worry about the future. Right here is enough. An early follower of Jesus by the name of Paul. I love how he says it. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. Can you turn to your neighbor, even at home, turn to your neighbor and say, Every situation. Every situation. It doesn't matter what the situation is good, bad, ugly, whatever it is. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's important to understand, though, there is a difference between being tired and depleted. Tired is what happens when you've worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you say, I need some rest, and you, you take Sunday. Or maybe, maybe from Friday when the sun goes down till Saturday when the sun goes down, you literally take the Sabbath, and you basically say, hey, listen, I'm going to take and I'm going to have rest. I'm going to take some rest. And in the midst of that, you become restored, replenished. But this idea of depleted, it's when you go week after week after week. And you may say, hey, no, 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 John, I actually do rest. I don't know about that. I don't know about you guys, but you guys got a honey-do list? Yeah. And you add to that list yourself. So do I. And I got to tell you, I started a honey-do list many years ago, and it has never finished. There's always something more to do, okay? In work, there's always something to do. But I want you to hear 
that the rhythm of rest, it leads to some very good things. And you need to hear this because we need, we need to truly rest. We need to get this rhythm. We live in a culture that says, hey, if you're a workaholic, we love you. It's a good thing. Nobody's ever had a problem with that except for your family, your marriage, your friends, but work loves it. A rhythm of rest, ultimately, it leads to greater creativity. You ever had those moments where you just, you just got like this mental block? You're not quite certain what to do. You get that rest and creativity is restored. Of the rhythm of rest, it also leads to a greater commitment to Christ. It does. When you rest in Him, when you rest and you basically say, hey, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to follow Jesus. I'm going to truly rest. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. But it leads to a greater commitment to Christ. A rhythm of rest also leads to a greater capacity for grace. It's kind of like this morning when you were driving here. And if you're anything like my family, um, We've gotten better over the years, okay? But I remember when we had the littles and we'd be driving and man, it felt like we came under some spiritual attack in that car on the way to church every single week. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you had those, those uh, constructive criticism moments. Um, you argue a little, whatever it is. But here's the thing, when you are truly rested, and you are rested in Christ especially, you have a greater capacity for grace. You don't get so upset when people cut you off. You don't get so upset when you're at the grocery store. And you know what? You're in a long line, and, and you see that the next line it opened, and somebody gets right in there, and you're, and you're like, what about me? I wanted to get over there, whatever it is. Hear these words from Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You see, we can talk about rest. We can talk about the practical. But at the end of the day, if you don't have spiritual rest, if you don't have the kind of rest that Jesus offers, you're never going to quite have what God wants for you. You'll never quite have that rhythm of rest that God truly wants for you. Again, we see Jesus say it this way, just in case anybody feels like we're becoming legalistic. He says in Mark 2, 27, then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. You see, this is actually a gift. Now, I'm not saying that we have to get legalistic and, hey, you're gonna, if, 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 if you actually take a break, you know, you're going to hell. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that God has given us the opportunity for rest. He's given us a pattern for rest. He has made each and every single one of us to need rest. Again, if the omnipotent God of the universe who never gets tired takes a day off, it's okay for you to take a day of rest. And in our society, we really need to be reminded of this rhythm because so often it's forgotten. When we talk about Jesus, we read of, uh, uh, in the book of Hebrews, this is written by, we don't know, uh, but it's an early follower of Jesus. And in Hebrews 4, 9 through 11, it says this, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works. See, we can't earn this. Just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Now, there's three results of the rhythm, rhythms of re, rhythm of rest. They, you ever have those words that it gets a little tongue-tied? The first one that we see is restored relationships. You will find that in a marriage and in a family, if you actually begin to actually take times of rest, you will begin to actually have greater communication with each other. Maybe you'll play some games or some puzzles or you'll sit down and actually have a conversation. You can take time and you can talk to your kids and you can pour into them. 
Another result of the rhythm of rest is replenished reserves. You'll actually have more energy to work and to play. Another result is refreshment and rejuvenation, which I think of as just having fresh eyes. So that in the morning, you might have a cup of coffee, but you don't need three and four and five cups of coffee just to make it through the day. And it's important to understand, even in the midst of all of this, you may not always have time that you can set aside to spend time with family and friends. But if you're resting, you will. But there is always time for God. I know that there's going to be seasons that things are going on. Maybe you're on the road. Guess what? There is always time for God. You can, as you're driving, you can talk to God. You can listen to His Word. You can put the Bible on there, whatever. But it's important to put God first. It's kind of like this. We believe that God can do more with 90% financially than we can do with 100%. Well, guess what? We are ultimately saying, God, I believe that you can do more in my life in six days than I can do in seven days. You will ultimately be able to literally do more, I believe, because three rhythms, there are three rhythms to rest. The first one is rest from work. This is simply saying, I'm not going to work today. That means even at home, I'm just going, I'm just going to enjoy life. The second one is rest from stress and anxiety. For some of you, for some of us, we need to simply turn off the television, turn off the radio, Stop reading whatever you're reading online, because let me tell you, all it is doing is giving you stress and anxiety. And in this society, if you don't know what to be afraid of, they will tell you, okay? They truly will. But if you take and you rest and you say, I'm turning those things out, even for one day a week, it would make a world of a difference. The third rhythm to rest Rest in your relationship with God. This is our identity. This is who we truly are made to be. Seated in Christ. Walking with Christ. Standing in Christ. As Ephesians, the book of Ephesians says. So as we talk about this rhythm of rest. And we go to this what now God moment. That we, that we look at each week. Because we don't want to just hear about this. We want to make it practical. Hear this clearly. The rhythm of rest, it's a rhythm of grace because it's from God. It's rest from our labors. Maybe you need to hear that. It's rest from our regrets. It's rest from shame. It's rest from fear and anxiety. What about tomorrow? What if? What if? We need a rest from the what ifs of life. We need a rest from the shoulda, the coulda, and the wouldas of life. Rest from fear and anxiety. Rest from unforgiveness. And when we rest in Christ, we are daily being restored. For some of y'all this morning, you're listening to this message, and you're listening to it with particular ears and eyes that have experienced the grace of God. That's good. For some of you, you've never experienced God. But I know this. God wants something more for you. God wants something that's only found in Jesus Christ. And it's His forgiveness. All we have to do is call out to Him. I have communion here this morning because this is a rhythm of rest. Hold on to it. Don't take it yet. The rhythm of rest is important enough that Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he said, this bread represents my body, broken for the sins of mankind. He took wine, we have juice, and he said, this wine represents the new covenant in my blood. See, he died for the sins of the world, but he would have died just for you. That's how much he loves you. 
Maybe you've never heard that. Maybe you've never experienced that kind of love. But here's the thing. For those who have chosen to follow Jesus, he gives this communion for us to remember and to rest in what he's given us in Christ and to remember until he comes. But I've got another one here. This is for you who have not chosen to follow Jesus. I want you to know God wants this for you. He wants this for you. But it's for you when you've chosen to follow him. For some of us, it may simply be our next step. You've chosen to follow Jesus. You've never been baptized. If you need prayer, if you need to receive Christ, if you need to be baptized this morning, we're going to have people up here in a moment to pray for you. What I want to do this morning is I'm going to pray for you, and then at the end, let's take of the elements together, and then I'm going to sing a song. Father, we come before you thanking you for the space that you've given us of grace, asking, Lord, that you would forgive us for our sins, for those known and unknown, asking, Lord, that you would help us to establish a pattern in our lives, a, a rhythm of rest that relies on you and on you alone. Father, thank you for all that you've done in Jesus Christ to let us rest. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The body, broken for you. Take, eat, remember. The blood of Christ, poured out for you. Drink, remember. We invite you to stand as we worship this in this last song. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings at 9 and 11 a.m. Please remember this. You belong at ACC.